You guys want to see a miracle today? <laughs> no, no joke. I about had a heart attack because I hit print, and it was like a printing press going off. I'm like, who else is printing? I look, it's just all mine. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm telling you. But <laughs> I'm excited about... <laughs> I'm excited about impressing Pastor Paul that I'm going to get through all this and get done on time. But, but seriously, what I'm excited about is the message that God gave me for us tonight. Uh, this is still summertime, so it's summer of freedom. Um, I believe the, the title that was in the, in the, the bulletin or the e-bulletin and all that was hearing the voice of God in times of crisis. I changed the name of that because here's what I believe. I believe if you're not hearing the voice of God every day, you're already in crisis and don't know it. If you're not hearing the voice of God every day, you're in crisis and you don't even know it. So tonight, I'm excited because number one, we're going to learn a couple of things. We're going to learn that God speaks. And we're going to learn that us here in Nuego, we can hear him every day. And because we hear him speak to us, it's not only going to change our lives, it's going to save our lives. And it's not only going to save our lives, it's going to save the lives of the people around us. Because tonight we're learning that it's normal for us to hear God's voice. It's normal. See, I, I've been around a while, and I talk a lot to people about hearing the voice of God. Because in 1985, I heard a message about hearing the voice of God. And for some reason, somehow, some way, it became real to me that I decided that the word of God was true. And because the word of God says I can hear his voice, I can. And I stood on that. And it's saved my life many, many times. I'll tell you a story uh, tonight about that. And it's also saved lives of the people around me. And that's also part of that story that you hear tonight. And so uh, this message about hearing God's voice, uh, it's, it's, it's in my heart and it's, and it's dear to me. And it will change your life. It'll change what tonight looks like for you. It will change what tomorrow looks like to you. And it's not because of me preaching a message. It's because of the truth of the word of God. Because the word of God is true. So let's all decide tonight that tonight and for the rest of our lives, the word of God is the truth. The word of God is the truth. I don't care what anybody says. The word of God is the truth. Let's pray. Father, thank you that your word is true. And I also thank you, Father, that tonight we choose to agree with your word and let your word be true to us. And we thank you for what you're teaching us. In the name of Jesus, amen. I have a lot of scripture that I'm going to go through. If you want to take notes, uh, just write the scriptures down. Don't write, Just write where it's from and you can look it up later. But in John chapter 10, verse 1, if you look in the King James, it'll say verily, verily. When in the King James, when you read that, the, the reason he's saying that is because I'm about ready to tell you something that you really, really, really need to know. I'm about ready to tell you something that's going to be important. So verily, verily, I say this to you. And so I don't read out of King James because I have a hard time with that. Maybe you do. So most of the scriptures that you're going to hear tonight are going to be out of the new King James, a little bit easier for me to read. I'll do my best today. I was eating and I scratched my throat. And so I'm a little bit choky, but I'm going to get through it. Um, so praise the Lord. <laughs> that's a word, choky. Have you guys had the Impossible Burger yet? You all were in New England, aren't we? I don't know, is that anything like a venison burger? Nope, not at all. Impossible Burger is a meatless burger, and Burger King has them, so I over, I'm overjoyed, and I had one today, but I, the piece of lettuce went down my throat, and I'm like, <coughs> and I'm like, what the heck is that? And I'm like choking, it's like, now I have a little scratch, and I can feel it, praise the Lord. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? As I... You know what? It's already feeling better. As I'm, as I'm teaching and preaching, it's gonna, the Lord's healing my throat. So I, I feel great. So if I go, if, 
<laughs> if I go a little bit longer, it's just because I'm feeling so good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, the <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird for us because of where we live and where I live, when we talk about Jesus being a shepherd, and it's like, I don't know, I don't, I, I live in a neighborhood, you know? A, a lot of people like the 10 acres with a log cabin. I like the no acres with neighbors and a white picket fence. So when I, when I hear about a fence, I'm not thinking about a fence where the sheep are kept. I'm thinking about a fence that has all little rows behind it, a little swing set, and the kids can play, and they're all safe. That's what I think of. But when Jesus was speaking, who he was speaking to, they understood things like the shepherd and the gate and the sheep and all that. So I'm going to ask you, just do what I do. Turn your brain around and catch on if, like, you're a, like you're sheep people. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> we'll have to pray for the interpretation on that one. But understand, put yourself, put yourself, get out of your neighborhood and, and jump in the scripture where he's talking about, we're talking about shepherds, and sheep and all that, and try and understand. So it says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So we, I mean, we can understand that. If somebody's breaking into your house, you know, they're climbing through the window. Um, it's either your wife and she forgot her key or there's somebody busting into your house, right? And so it, we can understand this. Verse two, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the door the, door, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep, listen to this, the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. Listen, getting the picture of this, uh, I don't know much about sheep, but I can imagine he's going he's gonna to take care of his sheep. And so they're listening to him. He, he's leading them where? And then when it's time to go, he, he leads them and he calls his sheep by name and he leads them out. And when he brings his own sheep out, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus uses illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. And I think about, if they didn't understand it, how am I going to understand it? But here's what I do know. By the Spirit of God, God has woven in his secrets of the kingdom of God in Scripture so that you and I who are seeking God and seeking the truth can hear and know and see and feel and live the truth because the truth is woven in the mysteries of the word of God. So let's keep reading in verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. See, the Lord has a plan for you and I. A lot of times, a lot of people know that the thief does not come yet to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they have life and have it more abundantly. We, we recite that. If we're broke as a joke, we'll say, we'll use scriptures to stand on that. And, um, but here's what we need to understand. We need to understand the fullness of the scripture on what's going in, what's going on in this story. It's all about following the Lord. It's all about hearing his voice. As we hear his voice, he leads us here. He leads us there. It's not about doing what we want. The sheep are not allowed to do what they want. They follow his voice. As they follow him, they're kept safe. As they follow him, they find pasture. Right? How many, 
the, the scripture I'm thinking about right now. The, the, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. I mean, how many of you know that there's people, though, that are hungry? There's people that are starving. Uh, they need to hear the voice of God. They need to follow him. They need to be led by him. That's what we're designed for. See, sheep are designed to have a shepherd. We're designed to have the Lord in our life. We're designed to follow him. We're designed to hear him. That's why he used this illustration for you and I. We are designed to hear the voice of God. That's normal. It's very normal. If we don't hear the voice of God, that's not normal. We need to switch our thinking. Another, another word that we can use if, you're in a, if we are in a church, but the church were to be called repent. Oh, I didn't sin. That's not what repent means. Repent means change the way you think. So I'm asking you today, all of us in here, to repent. Change the way you think. It's normal for you to hear the voice of God. Why? Because you're a sheep and he's a shepherd. That's normal. Nothing abnormal for you to hear the voice of the Lord. Verse 11, I am not the nasty shepherd, not the mean shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, uh, he who is not the shepherd, uh, one who does not uh, own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because... He is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Sometimes people think the Lord doesn't care. Isn't that true? You know, you're going through something tough. How about this? How about when you really mess up? You know, guys, when you <laughs> guys, when you really mess If you don't know what that means, guys, that's when you have the urge to stop and buy flowers on the way home. That's, that's, what, I'm talk that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you mess up. Those are the times where we feel like, ah, oh, the Lord doesn't care. How wrong we are. See, the Lord's not a hireling. He's the good shepherd. He cares all the time. He never stops caring. The hireling is the one that doesn't care. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, he says. I know my sheep, and I am known by my, my own as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. How many of you feel like there's times where I just don't feel like I belong? I think, I've felt like that before. Not in a long time. I just put in my head, I belong. Wherever I'm at, I just figure I belong. If I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I just figure I belong here. I'm good with it. But how many times do we feel like we don't belong? We don't belong. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. See, the Lord, the Lord is not allowing any of us to be lost. He's not a hireling. He's after his sheep. He's relentless. He's relentless. But do you notice how we hear his voice and we follow him? We hear his voice. We follow him. We hear his voice. Follow him. How many of us have gone weeks and months and even years? And if somebody says, what was the last thing the Lord actually said to you? They're like, oh, I don't know. I'd have to fast and pray about that one. Can't have that. And what is going to help us is just understanding this. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice and they know him and he knows them. Just stand on that. From this day forward, stand on that. If somebody says, how do you hear the voice of God? I just say, because the word of God says I do. That's how and that's why. Because the word of God says I do. Isn't that enough? Let that be enough for us, that the word of God says that I hear his voice, that I'm his sheep, he's the shepherd, I hear his voice. Well, you can say that all you want. That doesn't make, that you, make it that you do hear his voice. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Because you get it in your head, you get it in your mind, you get it in your heart. I can hear his voice. That's called faith. 
I can hear it. He hasn't even said anything that you know of. And you're saying, I can hear his voice. See, that's faith. We step out in faith. Say, I can hear his voice. Everybody say that. I can hear his voice. I will hear his voice. Every day of my life, I'll hear his voice. Here's another important part of that. I'll obey. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, get this. How many of you, constant, I know there's some people, maybe a lot of you, that constantly hear the voice of the Lord. Some, yeah. But how many of you have been like me? How many of you ever heard the voice of the Lord and said, mm, not today? <laughs> it's like, do you, do you, does that make any sense at all? It's like, he's not the bad shepherd. He's the good shepherd. I've done it. I have done it. Even when my name was Pastor Eric. I'm not talking about when my name was just Eric. I'm talking about Pastor Eric. The Lord said something. Like, oh, nah. <laughs> not to, you know. Nah. Oh, Ron do it. You're the man. You're the man, man. Let them, them, let them do it. It'll be easier for them. Right? We weasel out. Right? Too hard too hard. I mean, why do we think that the things God tells us, we have to do it on our own? Oh my gosh, we're out of our minds. Everything God tells us to do, he holds our hand. Oh, he walks through it with us. I got to keep going. You guys are slowing me down. It's all your fault. <laughs> I am the good shepherd, verse 14, he says, and I know my sheep and I am known uh, by my own. As the Father knows me, even I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep and the sheep I have, which are not mine, I'll bring them. They will hear my voice and there will be one flock, one shepherd. That's what we have. We have one. We have one Savior, one Lord. Uh, understand this. Understand this. He knows you. How many of you sometimes feel like, mm, I'm not that special, I don't know. I know in church we'll say, he knows me. But when you're at your job, when you're shopping, when, you, when you're having a bad day, when your transmission blows up, when your alternator pukes, when, you're, when your radiator hose leaks, times like that, we just feel like he doesn't know me. It, it, right? When pressure's on, sometimes we just feel like he doesn't know me because if he knew me, he wouldn't let me go through this. But what we need to understand is, oh man, he's right there and he's saying, follow me, follow me. And then you're thinking, what, is he a mechanic? <laughs> right? What is, I used, to, I, used to think weird, I used to think weird thoughts like that. That's how I can tell you this stuff. It all comes out of my head. <laughs> I think it's like, you know, I understand the word, but I live in the real world. I live in the real world. What? Stuff's just going to appear? Stuff's just going to repair itself? You know? Uh, okay, I'll stand, I'll stand on this, and then just all the bad things go away? Yes and no. Because get this. You've been through horrible things. So have I. And get this. This is the truth, right? I've been through horrible things before I was saved. It was bad. I've been through horrible things while being saved. Honestly, didn't even know they were horrible. I'm telling the truth. I've been through horrible things being saved and didn't even know it was horrible. That's how you go through following the shepherd. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't matter what happens. When God's with you, what can stop you? What can stop you when God's with you? I mean, seriously, seriously, seriously. What can stop you? What can wreck your day? What can wreck your day? Transmission blowing up? That don't wreck your day. Mm -mm. Only if you're walking on your own. Only if you're not following the shepherd. When you're following him, when he's leading you, it don't matter what this world throws at you because you and I both know the world's going to throw it at you. But when you're walking with him, you don't even feel it. You don't even know it. 
I remember when, some of you know, some of you don't, uh, Johanna died of cancer five and a half years ago. I can't believe it's been that long already. And, and people, yeah, I know, whew, crazy. And, um, and I remember people going, oh, that must have been so horrible. Well, they said that when she was still alive because it was uh, she went through 10 years of, of chemo, which is just an outrageous amount of time. And, and, and everybody would come up and go, oh, man, I feel so sorry for you. And me and her would look at each other and go, I don't know what they're talking about, do you? I was like, no. It's like, it's not that bad. And then, uh, seriously, it wasn't until after she passed away and, and that kind of went away. I'm like, oh, man, that was kind of horrible, wasn't it? But when you walk through it with the Lord, when you walk through things with your shepherd, it don't matter if the wolves are going, rah, 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 rah. that was my impersonation of wolves. <laughs> People, that's as good as I can get. <laughs> so when the wolves are biting at you, when they're scratching at you, it don't matter when you got the good shepherd with you. You can walk right through it. It don't matter if you got a hose in your nose. It don't matter when the shepherd's with you. You can walk right through it. You can walk right through it because you know he's got you. You know he's got you. Don't matter what you're going through. He's going to get you through. And then when you listen to him, oh, my goodness, that's where the victory comes. Because that's our destiny. That's our destiny. And this isn't in my notes either. This is all free. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Get this. You got to know that he knows you. Psalm 139. Oh, Lord, you have searched me. You known me. To, you know my sitting down and you know my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path in my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. You think God don't know what's going on on the inside of you? He does. He's acquainted with your ways. He still loves you. He's acquainted with my ways. And he says, Eric, you're the greatest. He says it to me all the time, by the way. You should start, you should start listening to him. He tells you that stuff all the time. You do stupid, crazy stuff, and he goes, oh, man, you're amazing. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's true. I'm telling you the truth because here's why I'm telling you this. It'll change your life. It'll let you do stupid stuff like I do, and you go, oh, I'm amazing. <laughs> and then the stupid stuff starts going away because he changes you by his word. When you start agreeing with the word of God, It'll change your life. See, when God starts telling you you're amazing, you're awesome, you can do it, you know what? Something crazy inside happens and you start believing him. You start, uh, you start believing you could get up on stage and talk to adults that are staring at you. When years, when years ago you couldn't say five words without being so nervous you didn't have any spit in your mouth. I'm not joking. When you start believing the word of God, it'll change your life. People will start looking at you and they'll start saying, you're amazing. Hmm. This is not even in my notes. So <laughs> maybe they'll let me come back another day because this... <laughs> is pastor here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. That's the first thing they ask you when you get home. How do you do? I know because he tells me that. I ask mom and dad, "How'd you do?" And I say, "What'd they say?" And they go, "Hmm." <laughs> no, no, they usually tell me he did all right. He did okay. It's not about me, right? It's about you. It really is. It's about you and what God's doing in you. It's about the word of God and whether you're going to allow it to be the truth. And whether you're going to listen to him and say, yes, I've argued with God so much. I'm serious. God, seriously, God does say this. You can do it. You can do it. And I'll tell God, no, I can't. You don't know who I am. He goes, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I know. I was there before, before I even made you. I was there with you. He says, I'm the one that put you together. 
That's one of my scriptures. I'll bypass that. Save some time. <laughs> God, I don't know how I get so funny. It just comes out of me. You know who's really funny is Pastor Mark. Is he's hilarious. He he says jokes. And he doesn't even laugh. He's I mean, it's just it's awesome. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I'm I listen to him. I'm cracking up. And he's like, why are you laughing? Because you're hilarious. <laughs> Uh, you guys got me off track. That's going to cost you. <laughs> Verse 3 in whatever chapter 30 and 139, we're in in Psalm. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have... You have me behind and before, and you laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot obtain it. Where can I go from you, from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heavens, you're there. If I go to bed, you're, behold, you're there. If I, take, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. I want you to picture that. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you didn't do. Scripture is true. His hand is on you and I. And the next part in verse 13 talks about he formed us in our mother's rooms. He was there. He knows you. He knows me. He was there. I know we think, that's Old Testament. That was then. This is now. John chapter 16, verse 13, talking about the spirit of truth. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, you know he has come, right? Jesus said, it's better that I go because if I go, Father's going to send the Holy Spirit. He will guide you in all truth. For he will not, listen to what he says, he will not speak on his own authority that's important that we hear that, and I'm going to close with this. He will not speak. When somebody speaks, what does that mean? Well, I don't know how to explain it either. He speaks. It means he's talking, right? If somebody's speaking, he's talking. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell Pastor Eric, the things to come? He will tell you. Everybody say, tell me. That's today. That's now. That's the Holy Spirit of God. You don't really need to know any more than that in order to hear the voice of God, to know that he's speaking. Here's where we get weird ideas, though. We get weird ideas that, because here's what happened. <laughs> I don't know. I must have messed up a lot because I keep getting these ideas. See, like, guys, when we, <laughs> when we mess up, I did one really horrible mess up. Oh, my goodness. I went fishing one time till 3 in the morning, and I was supposed to be home at about 9 o'clock. But my cell phone didn't work because I was way out in the sticks, and I didn't have, and I was in trouble. And you know what? When you get in that bad of trouble, your wife doesn't talk to you for a while. I didn't blame her. I didn't blame her a bit. I didn't deserve to hear her voice. But we think God does the same thing. Wives, you program us guys. We know that, we know, we know that when we really mess up, you're going to be quiet for a while. And we, and we think God's the same way, and he's not. He's not. He talks to us. Let me tell you that story I was going to tell you about hearing the voice of God. See, we need to hear the voice of God every day because when we're in crisis, we really need to hear the voice of God. A lot of you know, maybe you don't know, I grew up in the construction business. Uh, my dad retired. My brother ended up in the fire department uh, back in those days, not like today where construction is just absolutely going crazy. It was there's some tough times, and my dad retired. My brother decided he didn't want the hassles of, of the construction business, so I started a pawn shop. And you're saying, yeah, Pastor, I didn't realize you smoked cigars and were mean to people. Um, 
<laughs> that <laughs> that is not what it takes to run a pawn shop. And then you say, I didn't realize you were a ripoff, Pastor Eric. Once again, I'm telling you, that is not what it takes to run a pawn shop. What it takes to run a good pawn shop is to be friendly and kind and to be willing to help people and give them the money they need and let them come back and get their items later on if they have the money. Unfortunately, 99.9% .9 of the time they don't have the money and I end up selling it for four times what I paid for it. Anyways. It, <laughs> It's just business. <laughs> so, so I'm opening up my store, right, for business, wanting to help people. And as I opened the door and sat down in my chair and getting ready to set up, in comes a guy all wrapped in bandanas and a sawed-off shotgun in his hand. And I thought, who was playing a trick on me so early in the morning? And it wasn't a trick. He started screaming at me. I'm going to tell a short version. If you want to talk to me later on, I'll tell you more. But uh, for the sake of what I want you to hear. So he was, he was screaming at me, yelling at me. And um, I didn't cooperate with him. That's just my personality. I, I, wasn't, I had about $25,000 worth of jewelry in front of me. And he wanted it all. And I wanted him to have none of it. So when he threw the bag at me and stuck the shotgun in my face, it wasn't close enough for me to grab it. Otherwise, I would have. Uh, he stayed about six foot back, and he said, put all your jewelry in there. So I started shaking him, and I shook him onto the floor instead of into his bag. I'm just tricky that way. And, but he was kind of tricky, too, and he noticed what I was doing, and he got really upset. It was a single shot, um, sawed-off shotgun, and when you pull the, the hammer back, that's your safety. So the safety was off. He pulled the hammer back. All this time, here's what's going on. God is talking to me every step of the way. God is saying everything that I needed to hear. So I, while he was doing that and I was messing with him, I had a conversation with God. And I told God what I was thinking about doing. And so I told God, I said, I have a shotgun behind me. All my shotguns had a cable run through it except one, the one that had a, a slug, buckshot, slug, buckshot. That was mine. And that was not in the cable. And I told God, I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to shoot him. And God says, when you go to grab that, he's going to shoot you. So when he does, take it on the side so you protect your vitals. I'm going, hmm. And then, and, it, <laughs> and, and so then when, when I was talking to the Lord about that, he says, by the way, when you get shot, you're going to fall down because he's only six feet away. And so get up as soon as possible and grab your gun because he's going to reload. And I said, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not in the mood. So I, I told the God, God, I said, let's not do that. And so the Lord said to me, he says, when you get, because I was behind my counter and he was six foot away. I, could, I couldn't grab his gun and I would have. And the Lord says, when you get down to the opening, he's going to look at the door. When he looks at the door, uh, grab his gun. I'm like, yep, I like that one. And, and so, uh, he threw another bag and he said, give me all your money. Mm, I just went and stood in that opening. I'm pretty smart. See, when the Lord leads you, you might not understand. You just do what he tells you to do. I didn't do what that guy told me to do. I did what God told me to do. I went and stood in that opening because I knew when I got there, he was going to look at the door. And when he looks at the door, I'm going to grab his gun. So I went to that opening. He looked at the door. I'm telling you, he was about 10 feet away, but there was lightning in my feet. I don't even remember. It, it, it was like one of those movies where, and I was at him so quick, and I pulled the gun out of his hand so quick. It was so awesome. It felt like I won the lottery. I don't play, I don't play the lottery, but I can understand that feeling where, oh. And when I pulled the gun out of his hand, it just came right out, and he, he was shocked. And he started running, and I thought, no. Nah. So I cracked him over the head with it. <laughs> it <laughs> There's times where you can be led by God or not. <laughs> I haven't prayed about that part of it, whether that was God or not. But here's what I knew. I didn't want him to get away. I, it, who plays baseball? <laughs> You, 
You know when you hit a when you hit it and you boom, it just feels so good. It just you know, I'm t- I'm not joking. Or who golfs? You know, like when you when you hit it on the end of your club or too high, but when you hit it right in the middle, that ball just goes. Phew. That's how it felt. <laughs> I took two steps and cracked him over the top of the head. Oh, it, it was unbelievable. Smashed the gun, came to be, I hit him as hard as I could, no joke. Knocked him out. I'm sorry, I'm not kind of in shock. And then he woke up and he started heading for the door. I'm like, mm, nah, no, no, you're, you're not going anywhere. And so I, I tackled him at the door and I, he started reaching. I thought, oh no, he's got a knife or something. And I, I was going to grab his head and smash it into the cement. And the Lord told me this. The Lord said, you'll kill him. And he said, you'll kill him. I said, no, I don't want to kill him. So I, I cracked him as hard as I could. And I was so stupid. I hit him in the head. I broke my hand. You, if you, you want to feel the lump, it's right here. <laughs> I cracked it. I was like, oh, wrong. Then I remembered, soft on hard, hard on soft. So I, <laughs> that's, the, that's the, the rule. So I started hitting him in the neck. And I'm t- hard on soft. And, it, and I'm telling you, my, my arm was like a piston. I couldn't stop it. it. I can't even do it as fast as I was doing. It was like this. Boop, 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 boop. It, it was hard, though. I mean, it's like, he's he, like, uh. <laughs> Really, it was so hard. And it wouldn't stop. My arm wouldn't stop. It couldn't stop. And, and later on, I'm thinking, you know, if I grabbed him by the head, I seriously, I, I, I would have I caved his head in. But I just knocked him out because I was hitting him in the neck. And so with, with, <laughs> He's out of prison now. Seriously, he wrote me a letter later on and said, thank you for being the bravest man I ever met. And thank you, thank you, thank you for forgiving me because that was the first thing that I told him after I beat him up. (laughs) I did. I felt kind of weird about that. I beat him up. I beat him up bad. And then the first thing I said is, I forgive you, bro. It was so weird, but I did. But... He, he tried to hurt my family and tried to hurt me, and I forgive him for that. And, you know, but I'm thankful to the Lord that the, there's so many things that the Lord was telling me. I had a full conversation. Being able to hear the voice of the Lord will save your life. And being able to hear the voice of the Lord saved his life because I didn't cave his head in. And I'm seriously, it would have, I think back, it's like, oh, my goodness. We have to hear the voice of the Lord, and it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Why? Because we're his sheep, and he's the shepherd. And the sheep know the shepherd's voice, and they follow him. It's that simple. Please don't let anybody tell you it's hard to hear his voice. Because if you believe a lie, a lie can become the truth to you. Even though a a lie will never be the truth, a lie can become the truth to you. And if that's been the case, I'm going to pull that out of you right now in the name of Jesus. Don't let that lie be your truth because it is a lie. Scripture tells us clearly the sheep know the shepherd's voice and they follow him. Yes, let's follow him. It will save your life. It will save the lives of the people around you. People are going through struggle. You'll have a word from the Lord because he'll tell you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you what to say. I do it all the time. If any of you need a word from the Lord, come on up today after service. I'll give you a word from the Lord. He he talks to us. If you need more help in learning what I taught you tonight, I'll help you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you that pastor's not here. Thank you that Bill and Jerry will be kind. (laughs) We love you for being so amazing to us, Father. Thank you that we hear your voice. And thank you that by your strength and by your spirit in us, we can follow you. Thank you for the joy that you give us in following you. Because our steps are ordered by you. Good things you have planned for us was prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 29. We stand on that. You have good things for us. You've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 
Thank you that we hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs>